Hey guys, it's Eddie the Magic Monk. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to start moving things in your program, in your p5.js program. So what I want to talk about is what a variable is. A variable is a container for a number. And you can simply create that at the start of your program. You can define a variable. And if you have been doing a bit of high school maths, a symbol that they usually use is X. So we're just going to use that. And you're going to give this variable a number to start off. So you can simply say x equals, let's say, 30, for example. So how do we use this variable? Because if you save this and you refresh your program, you'll see that nothing has changed. And that is because you have not started using this symbol yet. You have not started using the variable yet. So in order for us to use this variable, we need to use that. We need to have X in the program somewhere. So let's say that instead of <coughs> um, drawing a rectangle at X is equal to zero, Y is equal to zero, I'm going to put X instead of zero here. And it's the same effect as writing 30. Okay, it means the same as writing 30, but I'm going to put X because I want to use this variable. So now X is used here as well. So I'm going to save it, control S, um, refresh the page and see what happens. And I'm going to predict that the rectangle or the square is going to move to the right 30 units. Yes, so it did move. Okay, so it did work. So that's not really moving though, because as you can see, um, the square has moved, but it stopped there. So what I really wanted to do is I wanted to keep moving to the right, keep moving to the right every um, every second or whatever it is. So in order for us to do that. I need to change what is in the x variable. Okay, I need to change what is in the x variable. So instead of saying um, instead of saying x is equals thirty, let's make it go back to zero so that when I click refresh, it'll go back. And then at the end of every loop, because if you guys remember, I talked last lesson about how um, the program is going to loop these commands. So it's going to start here. It's going to execute this line. It's going to execute this line. It's going to execute all of these lines. It's going to get to here. And then it's going to come back up the top and start executing it all over again. And then it's going to come back to the top. So it's a continuous infinite loop. And that is the point of the draw function. So now at the end of one single what we call iteration. So it goes from the beginning to the end just before it goes back to the top. I'm going to add one to the x variable. And you can write that in two ways. You can either write x equals x plus one. And that simply means whatever is inside x right now, I'm going to add one to it. And I'm going to save the result back into this variable. So at the start, x is going to be equal to zero. When it gets to here, zero plus one is one. So now X is going to be equal to one and then it's going to go down the instructions again. When it gets to here again, X is one already. So one plus one is going to equal two and then it's going to keep repeating. So two plus one is three and so on. 
So if I save this, look what happens when I click refresh. The rectangle is moving to the right now. Okay, but there are a few problems. Number one, it gets to the right, but then it leaves behind a black trail. And we don't want that. So what I'm going to do is at the start of the draw function, I'm going to redraw the background. So I'm going to actually move the background code. I'm going to cut it and I'm going to put it here. And what this is going to do is at the start of every loop, it's going to draw the background again. So save, refresh, and you can see it no longer leaves behind the black trail. Okay, now we have a second problem, and that is it moves to the right, but then it disappears. So it's actually still in the program, but it's keep it's moving to the right every millisecond and you don't um, ever see it come back so it's just gonna go up to infinite X but because it's not in the canvas you don't show it or you don't see it but it's actually still there so what we want to do is we want it to come back somehow okay we want it to come back somehow so what we're gonna do is we're going to create an if statement and a new variable called direction. So let's create a new variable called direction. Direction equals, let's call it right. So direction is a new variable I've created and inside this variable or container, I'm storing the word right. And then I'm going to use an if statement. I'm going to say if what is inside this variable direction is equal to right then i'm going to add one to x so this is actually not going to make any changes to the program if you have a look if i save this and i refresh the program it's still doing the same thing but why am i doing this because i have now added a new variable and then I've added the condition that in order for us to keep adding one to X, I want this variable to say right, which is what it's saying right now. Okay, at the start, the direction variable is saying right. And therefore, because it's saying right, I want it to move to the right. Okay, so now I'm going to add a new condition. And that is when the square hits the right edge, I want it to uh, not say right anymore. So I'm going to say if x is bigger than or equal to. Okay, so remember what the um, width of the level or the width of the canvas is the width of the canvas is 600 so i'm simply going to say if x is bigger than 600 um if x is bigger than 600 i'm going to change the variable direction equals left okay so what this is doing is as soon as x gets bigger than 600, direction is no longer going to say right. It's going to say left. Actually, let's just make it 500 just in case something goes wrong. So let's save that, refresh, and hopefully the rectangle is no longer going to move past the screen. Okay, it gets to here. Oh, it gets to here and stops moving. So it's actually going to have to be 400. Okay, so let's refresh that. Okay, so when X is bigger than 400, it stops. So remember how the rectangle is drawing it at a variable of X uh, coordinates from the left. 
So it stops、um, at x is bigger than or equal to 400. So the direction right now is saying left, and because I don't have an if statement saying、um, when the direction is left, what I want it to do, so it doesn't do anything. So let's now add a new direct new if statement in. If direction is equal to left, I want it to minus one from x. Okay, so let's refresh that and see what happens. When it gets to the right hand side, it should start coming back. Okay, it starts coming back because of my new condition. When the direction is left minus one, but you can see it keeps going back forever, which is not good. So I'm gonna add a new condition in. I'm gonna say if x is、uh, bigger than or if x is smaller than or equal to zero. If x is smaller than or equal to zero, change the direction to the right again. So when it keeps moving to the left, and the x coordinates of the top left of the square、um, gets to a number that is smaller than zero or smaller than or equal to zero, the direction will say right, which means that in the next iteration,、um, direction is right. It's going to start adding one to x, so it keeps moving to the right again, and then it keeps moving back. Okay, so the challenge now for you guys is to figure out the code for moving this entire shape right and left, rather than just the square. Let's see if you can figure out how to make the whole shape move to the right and come back. So, I'll leave this code here for a few minutes and see if you can figure it out. Okay, so I figured out the code for moving this entire shape. Basically, you just have to make sure that you put x's in the right places. So I've put an x for the x coordinate of the rectangle, x plus a hundred for the circle, x plus zero for the line, x plus two hundred for the line. So remember how x is a number that starts off with zero. But it keeps adding by one or subtracting by one when it gets to these lines. So you want to make sure that you add whatever x is to the x coordinates of each of the shapes that you're drawing. So that was going to help move the shape back and forth. Okay. So next lesson we're going to look at how to change this so that it responds to your keystrokes. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.